So quantum Fourier transform. Um, it's time again to take a look at some of the textbook quantum algorithms. And um, this is not per se an algorithm. I mean, it is, but I think the reason I'm doing this is because it's one of the essential pieces to finally then sort of at the end understand Shor's algorithm, which is one of the most um, famous algorithms uh, available right now because of the, the fact that it deals with uh, factorization of prime of, of numbers and and so the idea is that this could this could potentially threaten um, encryption uh, as it is right now um, and so I am gonna try to with this video I'm going to try to uh, go through that that looks extremely heavy uh, and mathematically um, and see whether we can like intuitively understand what the quantum Fourier is, the QFT is. I probably gotta use QFT because it's easier to pronounce. But again, and I have to say a disclaimer, I am not even super familiar with what the classical version of this is. Um, I had to check that up, but I even like uh, so what's the Fourier transform? It has, it has to do it has to do with it has to do with um, uh, turning sort of waves into into their I think frequencies they are made of i think that's that's what i remember from reading a bit around uh, this topic so it decomposes a function of time signal into its constituent frequencies um it's similar to the way a musical chord can be expressed in terms of the volumes and frequencies it's going to do, do, do. linear approaches remain so i think it's something like uh, um, <laughs> that's a pretty long article there was a an interactive guide. I don't want to go a lot into what that classically is, um, but I think given a smoothie, it finds the recipe. <laughs> okay, yeah, I guess that's what it does. It's it finds out. So if you got if you've got a complex wave. Or you've got a wave of sound, it finds out what it's made up of. Um, so what are the base frequencies of that, that make make up for that for that one, one thing? How is that useful for Schur's algorithm? I don't know. But and, and what is even the quantum version of this? I don't know. Um, so let's see, let's see if that's helpful. So let's go let's go through the introduction. Uh, Fourier transform the Fourier transform of course in many different versions start classical computing, mm, signal processing, data compression, complexity theory, blah, blah, blah. And the quantum is the quantum implementation of this. So it's a quantum implementation of the discrete Fourier transform over the amplitude of a wave function. It is part of, okay, it's part of many algorithms and sure factoring algorithm, okay. Uh, phase estimation, it's another I think it's what comes next. So that's probably gonna be another video on that. It's, it's, it's another thing that, um, that you take a look before attacking uh, before attacking Shor's algorithm. The discrete Fourier transform acts on a vector and maps it to the vector according to the formula. That's a great way to start <laughs> with the mathematical formula. Okay, but it basically it it seems like it's just a bunch of weights and I don't know where where this is of this form. Similarly, the quantum Fourier transform acts on a quantum state. And it maps it to the quantum state, blah, according to the formula, blah. Um, isn't there a way to get started with this that it's not so much technical? Uh, I mean, I don't have, it's not, it's like, uh, but I, I guess what, what this is telling basically is that the, this is not a new thing or whatever. It's just a quantum implementation of the same concept. So we want to we want to turn, we want to find the components of of an, a, a wave. Uh -huh. Consider how to. Oh, it's good examples. Let's go through the examples. Um, consider how the QFT operator, as defined above, acts on single qubit state. Okay, that I, I like this. So this we have a single qubit state, and in this case, x zero is alpha, x one is beta, and n equals two. So they apply the formula they came up, they, they just presented in here, blah 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 blah. So you end up with this result, which is basically, this is actually interesting. This this is actually the Hadamard gate. Hmm. Hmm. Is it? Yeah. 
alpha plus beta, alpha minus beta. This operation is exactly the result of applying a Hadamard operator on the qubit. Yeah, okay. Interesting. So the QFT on so the Q the QFT on a one qubit it's basically the Hadamard. Which means uh, so I think what this means is so if because a qubit can be in a superposition. So if you understand that as in um okay it's in a superposition and then what the Hadamard is do is gonna do is kind of bring it back to what it originally was, which kind of is maybe similar to what the concept of uh, the Fourier transform does, right? So it basically, okay, so it, it takes a signal that's a mixture of stuff and then finds out what it was, what is it made of. Uh, that makes sense intuitively, right? So the Hadamard does that. So if you apply Hadamard to a, let's say you have a state you don't know what it is, you know it's in a superposition, um, and you apply Hadamard, then you're going to know what it was made of before because of the reversibility thing, right? So if you apply a Hadamard on zero and then a Hadamard again, then you go back to zero. Okay. Seems to make sense to me so far. If we apply Hadamard operator to the state, we obtain this new state. Okay. Notice how the Hadamard gate performs the discrete Fourier transform on n equals two on the amplitudes of the state. Okay. The quantum Fourier transform. So what does the quantum for the QFT look like for a larger n? Let's derive a circuit for n, for n which equals 2 to the power of n, acting on the state. So you've got this state, where x1 is the most significant bit. OK, yeah. Mm -hmm. So here they apply the formula. I'm going to skip that, see if that's going to hurt me, probably. Um, mm, 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 since blah, 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 uh, blah, they apply the formula, they come up. So this is the, so this is the final state. So it's a, it is a superposition, it's an equal superposition as you can see, right? Because it's one divided by the square root of n. Is it? Uh, maybe not. I don't know. Mm, maybe. I don't know. No, it works for n equals two, but I don't know if that's what it is. Okay. This, this, of this, I, I don't know. The circuit that implements it, the circuit that implements QFT makes use of two gates. The first one is a single qubit Hadamard gate that you already know from the discussion in example one. You can already, you have already seen the action of H on the single qubit state. It's this one. Is it? Is it? Why is it? Mm. Because uh, because of this. I don't know. I don't know. So the second is a two qubit control rotation given in block diagonal form. It's a two qubit control rotation given in block diagonal form, whatever that means. Control rotation K, this and this rotation. Okay. The action of the control rotation on the two qubit state, where the first qubit is the control and the second is target is given by the first qubit is the control and the second is the target and okay yeah so it rotates so it's a control rotation on the one component it does nothing to zero and it does this to one Given these two states, the circuit that implements an n qubit QFT is shown below. So you do a Hadamard, and then a it seems fairly simple. So, but it's like why? So the Hadamard, and then you've got a control rotation. 
and then you've got another okay so you've got a hardware gate and then a bunch of control rotations over each of the qubit no uh, yeah each of the qubits exactly uh -huh, and then you repeat that okay interesting and then you do hardware here and then you apply your control rotation for the rest and then your hardware here and okay so it's it's simple it, it's kind of actually pretty simple but i i don't really understand at the intuition level, what is, what is what is this really doing? You know, I mean, you can just form, follow the formula and probably make you. you I mean, yeah, this like the formula probably makes sense, but it, the formula is just given to us. So, what I want to try to understand is, I understand intuitively what the Hadamard does. So, what the Hadamard does is, it kind of goes, it kind of goes back. So it feels like with the Hadamard, you're going, you're you're kind of trying to undo, right? And then going back to what this was. Uh, but then, I'm not so sure why those rotations are intuitively needed. The circuit operates as follows. We start with an n qubit input state. Cool, understood. After the first Hadamard gate on qubit 1, the state is transformed from the input state to the following. Yeah, so that's the effect of the Hadamard. And so after the control rotation um, gate on qubit, uh, on qubit 1, by qubit two, the state is transformed to mm -hmm. yeah. So uh -huh. after the application of the of the last control rotation gate on qubit one, mm -hmm. noting that this we can write the above state as this. After the application of a similar sequence of gates, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, example two, maybe let's go through the example, three qubits, QFT. Um, apply a Haramard, yeah, but it's again the, apply a Haramard, apply a control rotation, a control rotation, apply a Haramard, apply a control rotation, apply a Haramard, end of the story. Um, keep in mind the reverse order of the output state relative to this RQFT. Hmm. And then we jump into the Qiskit implementation. So the example above demonstrates a very useful form of QFT. Note that only the last qubit depends on the values of all the other input qubits, and each further, further bit depends less and less on the input qubits. This becomes important in physical implementations, where the nearest neighbor couplings are easier to achieve than the, OK, that's a technical thing of because of how the device is built. Um, so in Kiski, the implementation of a C-rod gate used in the discussion above is, con is a controlled phase rotation gate. Uh, it's a controlled phase rotation gate, blah, blah, blah. Do we have a circuit? Uh, what is this? Tire circuit. So I... Ah, okay, so the first, so this is like, I think they are preparing a, something. Hmm. Okay. Control phase rotation is control Z. Mm. So. Is the Kiskin implementation what? Uh, okay, so the first part is you prepare a state and they want to see like a Z01. So this is the state preparation. for the circuit. Why should this return one? No. So if we if I if I go ahead and uh, create a new circuit and I say we want um, three qubits and we're gonna do three so we're gonna do Hadamard, Hadamard, Hadamard and then we're gonna do uh, was written here so yeah 
and scroll automatically. So and so we're we're doing we're doing we're doing we're doing U ones three fourteen one fifty seven zero seventy nine. So we're doing minus three fourteen. Minus one fifty seven minus zero seventy five uh, seventy nine, I think it was. So what have we got now? Mm. What's the density matrix of this fancy stuff? Okay. Mm. See, but I still don't know why. So why is the, the QFT supposed to return 0, 0, 001? Okay. Um, why? I don't really know. I mean, it's kind of marked here um, as in like having, but I don't know why this is supposed to be the, the result. Still, I'm going to probably have to do some, some extra background on this. Um, and then, uh, and then build the. Uh, okay, and, and those those it's interesting. Exactly, those rotations are like that. So those are so one hundred fifty seven zero seventy nine. One fifty seven. So those are control control rotations. One here, another one is here. And then we've got another Hadamard here. And then finally, we've got another rotation here, correct? Ah, this needs to just keep scrolling automatically. Um, I have to remember that. So that's it. 150, so 157, as you 79, 157. Yeah? So 157. Zero seventy nine one fifty seven. Is that correct? Is that correct? This, this. This, this, ah, another hard mark, and then the measurements. Okay. This, this, this. Yeah, the last hard mark, and then, and then we're gonna measure this. We're gonna measure this, and we're gonna measure this. So this is uh, Q of T three. I'm just copying the example right now. So, uh, but I still want to really. Uh, what if we run this? So, I mean, that should give us zero zero one with higher pro with the highest probability if we take a look at measurement probabilities, kind of fifty percent of the time. Um, so, if I run this on the simulator, just to confirm that that this is the case. Okay, it's being run. Um, so I guess I guess we can we can forget about this. This is just for the sake of the example. It's like we've got something and then we and, and we expect the result zero zero one. This is just a, a way to prepare quickly. Um, but I'm. But what, what does it really, what does it really mean? Uh, okay. So blah blah blah, yeah. I mean, that's what we saw there, right? So there was really no need to run that. Zero, zero, 001 is kind of the, the state that we get most of the time. Um, but still, still intuitively, what's 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 intuitively happening here, right? So let's let's go back again uh, for a second to what the classical version of this does, right? So, discrete, because they say discrete for you transform. So what does it do? Um, 
So in mathematics, the discrete Fourier transform converts a finite sequence of equally spaced samples of a function into the same length, and blah, blah, blah. It's just too technical again. Um, Continuous function top and a discrete function. So it turns the function is in any quantity of signal that the function is any quantity or signal that varies over time, such as the pressure, a sun wave, and radio, blah blah blah. Um, Uh, so it so that is a bit different. So it seems like what this is doing is it's turning that into a discrete version of a discrete version of your um, of your wave. So it's approximating the wave. Of course, many different versions are classical. In areas ranging from signal processing to compression, is a quantum condition of discrete is a quantum condition of discrete Fourier transform over the amplitudes of a wave of a wave function. Um, it is part of many quantum algorithms. Okay. It acts on a vector and maps it to another vector. Um, but still. So <laughs> because hmm. larger ends. I'm trying to think. It's like because I'm I'm here's a bit. It's a bit abstract for me right now in the sense that. Um, It's 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 doing what it's trying to. So you've got a. Um, it's a bit abstract to me in the sense that it, so you've got a function. Is it is it really this what we're trying to do? So it's like you're. Why why is then one the answer here, right? I mean. So you've got three qubits, right? That describe. Um, so I mean. Let me create a new. I can move that. No. So we've got three qubits. And and you've got a bunch of a bunch of uh, rotations. Let's see what will happen if I do something like that. So now we've got this. What if I apply the QFT to this? What is the answer? What is the answer? Yeah, well, I don't. How do how how would I apply? I'm gonna close that. How do I know the rotations first of all? Kind of transform. It's a, the second is a two qubit control rotation. It's it's e to the power of that. So let me see if I remember well and the. Hmm. If I go here and I check the gates overview and I go to the U1 gate and I go to, okay, so there's an, an angle here. And then, uh, so, because I wanted to know what is really the matrix that, that this is implementing. Uh, quantum gates, is it, is it somewhere here? Somewhere here, quantum gates. Oh, 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 
up here you've got ah okay so u1 is basically this so you've got okay the the parameter is this is so it's e to the power of like i times the uh the parameter that's what u1 is so if we want to implement um if we want to implement this, boah, this scrolling is crazy. If we want to implement this, so the the okay, it's e to the to i times okay, so it's basically two times pi divided by two to the power of the qubit you are in. Okay, so this basically means that uh, two to the okay, so this basically means uh, if I'm trying to remember that. 2 times pi divided by, okay. So if I go here and I um, say the first step is, let's copy from here. So the first step is, oh, and actually I think I got it wrong here all along. Did I? I think I needed another Hadamard here. Ah, now it's completely one. Okay. Um, so I apply a Hadamard and then I apply a controlled rotation and First, my k is zero, right? So this rotation is um, as two times pi divided by um, basically one, right? Because it's two to the power of zero, uh, which I'm not, is it, is it like that? Uh, here we used a 1.57, which is actually the half of pi. Uh, it's because k is one, k probably starts with one, sorry. So this is basically, hmm. so I, I have to keep, wait until it's, because, So K, 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 is, K is, I think starts with one. Okay, so K is one, so then, then, ah, but there's the I here, um, so, so this would basically mean two to the power. I'm doing this wrong because if I do two times pi times i, this is this. So if I divide that by two, we're getting we're getting this. Um, so I don't get it. How is that the first angle? Oh, and by the way, this seems to be. Have I have I gotten it have I gotten it right that the circuit why are those rotations I thought they should be mm, shouldn't matter um, but basically that is so basically that is I'm gonna use those numbers. Maybe I don't know. I'm, I'm making a stupid mistake somewhere, but I I had I had the impression I was under the impression that I mean <laughs> this is me getting into the maths. <laughs> that's why I do the that's that's why my channel is called Quantum Intuition. It's just an excuse not to uh, show how sloppy I am. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So for the first. So it's two times pi times i divided by. Ah, oh, sorry, I have to exclude the i here because the i is already in the in the gate in the way the gate is implemented.
Okay, and then it might be that this is already four, right? So this is why it's one fifty seven because uh, this is the um, so this is one and this is qubit two and this is qubit three. So this is already qubit two. So we're doing so we're doing basically basically this, right? Which is so which is uh, which is basically. I hope that they are doing the because that's four definitely. So it's just one fifty-seven. I don't. Know, I, I don't know how much can, how much formal can I be with expressions. So there should parentheses or not. But that's basically what, what's happening here. Okay, and so then and um, <laughs> and then there's another control one here. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, okay. So this is this, and now it's the same, but it's not four. It's six, correct? Am I right? Uh, no, it's eight. Of course. Stupid. Stupid. So it's eight. Okay. And then we basically have a not a Hadamard, and then we do the control rotation here with the same parameter like this one. And then we do another Hadamard. So that basically gives us this. Is this the correct way to implement that? Seems like, seems like, seems like. Hmm. But I don't know what that is. So if we take measurement probabilities, Zero one 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 zero one. Mm. I mean, it, it just it, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to understand what I mean because like here I just prepared some whatever random stuff and then and then I applied the same the same pattern here. Um, but yeah. I think I need a bit more background on this. So this is not yet, I don't fully understand. So I understand, I mean, the, 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 the circuit is pretty simple. Um, it's just the, maybe my lack of, my lack of knowledge of what the classical does really is um, hurting me here. Um, and also the fact that, so I one the one thing that I, that I see with this video here now is that the, so I understand the concept of the hardware for me as in like, it's coming back, it's coming back to what it, what the state is made of, because basically the Hadamard gate is a superposition. It, it creates a superposition, but it also destroys a superposition if you apply it again. So it's kind of this. Intu this intuitively I understand, but then I don't fully understand the rotations. So um, stay tuned for the next video. I think I think this is uh, this is definitely going to be uh, definitely going to be an interesting one. Uh, but this is my understanding first. That basically what we're trying to do with QFT is we're trying to um, understand what was the original state made of, maybe. I don't know. That's my, that's my current understanding. Perfect.